Okay, so keep your eye on the flame because it's part of our experiment today. It, it went over there. You gotta keep your eye on things. Oh. Well, hi everybody. Today we're, is week 13 and we're gonna be discussing the forceful wedge. So if you remember the way the inclined plane looked, it was a triangle that was sitting on its side and usually inclined planes are big, big things. Whereas the forceful wedge here, it's usually smaller things, but some of them can be pretty big, which we'll discuss in just a minute. So, we did incline plane last time. Today we're gonna do the forceful wedge. So, where do you see wedges? You actually see them all the time. Once again, it's a simple machine, so we use it all the time in our daily lives. And what a wedge does is it just pushes things apart. Sounds simple? Simple machine pushes things apart. Things like boats going through the water, they have a point at the front, so as they're going through the water, they separate the water and push the water out of their way so that they can move through it. Um, cutting wood, when winter comes around, we all have our fireplaces, if we're lucky enough to have one in our home, you need cut wood for that, so we use an ax to split it and to wedge the wood apart to make separates. And of course, in nature, that's where we get most of our best ideas from, like a woodpecker, which we have one outside, sometimes you can hear it using its beak as a wedge to poke holes into the wood so they can find insects underneath that are hiding in there. So, how does the wedge work? Well, it works by taking a driving force, usually on its flat edge, and pushes it down into the pointy part, and that redirects the force outward. So when you have your wedge going down, it's getting pushed from up here and it's pushing whatever it's going into outward from that pointy area. So the flat part is the top where the force goes in and the redirection happens along the sides here. Now, you have a long one, you have a short one. What's the difference? Well, when you put force up here, there's a lot more area to redirect energy outwards. So you end up with more redirection for a longer one than you do with a shorter one. Look at how tiny that area is. So much shorter. So when you push down on this one, it's only redirecting a little bit of that force outward, whereas this one has a much longer, much longer area that they can push that force out. So you can break much bigger things up. So what are wedges? Shovel, it's a wedge. Axe, it's a wedge. Huh, what's that? Oh, teeth. These are wedges. We have them in our own face. So if you're hungry and you want to take a bite of something, you don't just start in the back because that'll just mush it up. You start in the front with your front teeth and you, you use a wedge to bite into it. You can actually see your little wedge incisions in it. Try it with an apple or anything that's a little harder and you'll be able to see those nice and clean wedges. So we're going to go around and we're going to see what wedges we find in our environment. This is a wedge. And this is a wedge. This is a wedge. In your box, this is a wedge. And, surprisingly enough, this is a wedge. There's blades in there that are sitting at an angle that wedge to sharpen your pencil. There's two wedges in there. All wedges. Spoon, fork, knife, wedge, wedge, wedge. Yep, checks out. Staples are wedges too. Okay, so here's one of today's experiments. I've made two different wedges, and yes, airplanes are wedges. They cut through the air. So just like a wedge, like how you saw the wedge, it cuts through the air. Because what is the air? It's a gas, gas full of molecules. It's gotta be able to go through all those molecules, so it's cutting right through the air. So. I've made two paper airplanes. One, I gave a very sharp point to a very long side. And I'm gonna be pushing from the back so my hand is like poof, 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 that force that's pushing it and it's gonna be pushing the air to the sides. This one, another type of airplane, looks really cool, but it's got a flat nose on it. More squared than pointed. So we wanna have a nice pointy nose versus a flat one. And it's about the same length, same paper too, exact same sheets of paper. I've made it flat, but I'm gonna use my force to try to push it through the air, but we'll see how the flat nose works versus the pointy nose, all right? So, I've got an expanse over here in our burgeoning garden. It's starting to get better and better every time. 
And let's see, I'm gonna try our classic wedge first, and let's see how far it gets. Woo! Ah, I made it all the way to the other one. I didn't think it was gonna go that far. All right, this one, you see, has a lot more wings, so I think you can actually hold onto the air a little better, keep the molecules under it, but let's see what happens, all right? So it's flat. Whoop. I guess it wanted to come back. Huh, let's give it one more try, just to see if it has the same exact result. Yep. Well, that's what I expected, honestly, because all those air molecules are pushing against it, and there's nothing that's pushing the air away. So what it's happening with it is, it's just hitting them all, and they're all making up, and they're saying, no, we don't want you to go any further. We can't separate. We can't find another direction to go. You can't redirect us around you so that you can fly through us. So we're gonna stop you, and then you're just gonna get pushed around until you finally fall down. So that's a fun experiment. Try different types of vapor airplanes and see if you can get it further by making it even more pointy because you can make those really narrow and see if maybe making it broader so it can glide a little bit further. You can try a whole bunch of different experiments with it. So have fun with that. All right, bye. Today, we are building paper airplanes. Now, I showed you two in the experiment, so I'm gonna make those two now, and I'll add an extra little experiment at the end just because it's kind of fun to do it. All right, so the first one we're gonna make is we're gonna make the super pointy one. This is the one that's got the big, the point that we need for our wedge with a psh, 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 to work really well. So we're gonna start folding it in half, and I like to line the corner here up with my finger, make a crease, and then I'll just hold this side and, and you should see both corners should be the same. Then when I open it, half a piece of paper. Then fold this half over once, crease it with my finger, do the other side, and we're just mimicking both sides. If you need help, just ask an adult or an older sibling or even a younger sibling who likes making paper airplanes a lot. And so the other one, I'm just, after I've done this fold, I'm folding again towards the center and then making a nice sharp crease. I wanna make sure the edge of my wedge is nice and sharp so it can cut through the air like a knife, which as we know, is also a wedge. So I've got both sides folded and then folded in again like that. And then I'm gonna fold them in half keeping the folded side on the inside. And then I'm just gonna lay it down, crease it out. Make sure it's all nice and pushed down. And as you can see, mine isn't exactly perfect. See that? It's not quite perfect, but that's okay. Little variations, they're all right. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna fold it with the bottom edge here. Actually, the bottom edge, so this is our fold bottom edge. I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it right back along that edge the whole way down. So as you can see, no folds, fold it along. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. You're making sure that your point stays pointy. Yes, the point stays pointy, as pointy as you can keep it. And if it gets a little, it gets a little funky and bent, you just kind of squeeze it, lay it down on a flat surface, and then check it out. Oh yeah, that is one speedy craft. So now we're gonna get to the one with the blunt or flat edge. Really cool plane. Do some cool tricks with this. So I'm gonna take same sheet, no difference. We want to make sure that when we're doing our experiments that the things we can control and keep the same, we always keep the same. So in this case, I'm changing the way I fold it, but I'm using this same sheet of paper with all the same weight. So I fold it in half, just like the previous one. Hot Pretty dog. simple. Hmm? It's a hot dog fold. Oh, it is the hot dog fold, yep. Put your hot dog in there. Nom, 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 nom. All right. <laughs> so let me fold it over, and notice that I'm doing the exact same folding I did on the last one, just folding the corner to the center line in the corner to the center line. And then see how I hold it down and I drag my finger to make sure it's nice and sharp. 
I want to want to make sure that I got the sharpest edge. Now this is where it changes. So on the last one we folded this in. No, no. On this one we're folding the center down to right where these two pieces cross over. So it's like this, and we're folding it right to where those two folds end. All right? And then hard creasing it again with my fingers. So it should look like center line, first fold. It's then taking the tip and folding it back. So we're getting rid of the pointy part that we have on our other plane. We're just getting rid of that altogether. And then I'm gonna fold it in half again, just like that. And then I'm just gonna fold it down. And I'm taking the fold of this corner here as it goes in, and I'm gonna fold it that corner down to the bottom there. That's a tough one. So as you can see, I folded that little area in half. If you remember your fractions, this is half to where the edge of that fold is on the inside. And then just like before, making a nice sharp line. So you can see how the folds are working. So it was folded and folded again. And then I'm gonna flip over my plane. So now this is the other side. And I'm gonna do the exact same fold with the front. So I'm gonna take it, line it up there, and then pinch it squeezed. And once I have it nice and squared, drag in my finger. And now look at how sharp those lines are. Those are some sharp folds. Look at that. That's ready to cut right through the air. All right? And so remember, when we're throwing it, that, that image of the applied force being pushed to the back of it, and we're hoping that that force, as it's in this airplane, will displace the air around it so that it can cut through the air. But the blunted side, as we saw outside, doesn't work so well. Now, second part of this, which is pretty fun, is put them together. You make a mecha, a super airplane. So you take your big one and you set it inside here. Actually, I wonder if it'd work better like that. Oh, it could work like that too. But you take your big one and now, notice what you've done. You've given it a point. So you take your blunted plane and now I've lined it up there and now it has a point. See what happens when you put them together like this? You can even put a staple in it and throw it. See if the blunted plane, this one here, still slows it down or see if together they get to go further. And then it's a transformer, right? It's a big mecha. You push this one back and have, nah, it's gotta be inside. And you have this be further back. Now the same two together, you can staple them together, but now the blunted end's in the front and throw it and see what happens. See if you get the same distance as when this one is pushed through. And you can transform from pointed fast flying wedge to blunted wedge and then tell me what happens. Tell your teachers, tell your parents. Maybe send me a little message and tell me if you get different results. And try it a couple different times and try it with different plane designs too. All right, that should be a fun experiment for you. All right, bye.